Okay, so like I was talking about, that last room was all about collaboration, boardrooms, huddle rooms, things like that. This is about something more like higher education. We're in a lecture hall or an auditorium of some kind. And here I'm a professor. I'm giving a very important lecture. Uh, you are all my students. Welcome, class. Thank you for coming today. Uh, I also have a TA here in class today. Say hello to Patrick over oh, there. Hi. He's going to help me out a little bit with his demonstration. Uh, and in this environment, you are all in the room. So you are going to have a good experience because you can learn from me directly. Uh, but we all know the world has changed in the last couple of years. And we've got people who are going to be learning remotely, right? Education is now a hybrid experience where you've got in-room participants and distance learners, and we want equity between those two types of learners so that people at home can get as good of an experience as if they were in the room. How can we give that to them? Well, there's a couple bits of technology in this room that I'm gonna show out to you. I'm gonna show out to you? That's not a phrase. Anyways, uh, first of all, I want you to take a look at the cameras in the room. Up here, I'm gonna cycle through the five cameras that are at our disposal just to show you what each of them are looking at. There's two cameras up here uh, above me looking at the audience. There's two cameras in the back that are aimed at the presenter. There's another camera in the far back corner that's aimed at the whiteboard. And again, if you're watching this carousel of videos, you'll see that pop up, there it is. So five different cameras. Why do we have five different cameras? We'll talk about why in just a second. This screen is showing us what we're sending to the far end. So if you're at home and you're dialing in to learn about Nate's lecture, that's what you're seeing. You got a medium shot. You can see me walking around on stage. You got uh, a whiteboard that you can't really see too well if I'm drawing on it. And uh, if anyone in the audience has a question, you're definitely not seeing that on that shot, right? And it's a static shot. If you try to watch that for an hour, you're gonna get really bored. If you're bored, you're not learning. This is a mediocre experience for the distance learner. Let's improve that. How do we get that better? Uh, first thing we can do is we can integrate the audience. So if someone in the audience asks a question, for instance, we want a camera to focus on that person, but I don't want to pay someone to sit in that room all day long just to toggle over to another camera. That's a waste of time. We want to automate that. So we're going to automate it with automatic camera preset recall. Audience switching enabled. Uh, Professor McCarrick, uh, your TA here, I'd like to interject a little bit and talk about ACPR. Now, when I started talking, that camera over there switched to me. And it's done so because my voice is hitting the proximity of that microphone. And that microphone is delivering proximity data to QSIS so that it can make the switch automatically. And if I'm another student and I stand over here and I've got a question, once again, that microphone is going to give us some XY data to tell us, hey, there's someone in the room on the other side that needs to be in the shot. Now you can see there's, the camera has now aimed at me and I am included. And that's why we got two microphones, because if I had one mic, two microphones, two cameras, if I had one camera trying to do this, then as soon as Patrick starts talking, it would look at him, and then it's gonna pan across the whole audience and look at me. Then people are vomiting on their laptops because they think that they're in a roller coaster. You can't learn if you're vomiting. I've tried that before. So instead, we can give them a more cinematic experience by cutting to when the shot is ready. If I stop talking and Patrick starts talking, that second camera can go and focus on him, and when it's ready, then we cut to that. Yeah, and let's take a quick look at the way that we've got this preset set. It might look a little wide, and that is absolutely by design. Darren, if you get your head out of that screen right now, hopefully, or it's gonna pick you up, there we go. So if, if we think about what we've got here, we've actually created a margin of error for QSIS to work with. Um, and when we deploy another technology called auto framing. Auto framing enabled. It's gonna count the number of faces that it sees. So it sees my friend over here, come on over here. It sees two people and it's gonna frame both of our faces to be relatively in the center. And if you were to scoot all the way out of frame, it's gonna see that you've left the frame and it's gonna frame right up on me. So take a few more steps that way and we'll give QSIS a second and look at there, pops right back in. So now we've got the audience as part of that far end call, right? We can see the people in the audience, we can get a nice tight crop on them, but when we are in presenter mode, we're still with this. We're still with the super wide, uh, mediocre shot. It's time to improve that part of it. And for that, we're going to introduce something, one of the biggest developments in QSIS for a while. This is AI-driven, full-body presenter tracking via SEER vision. Presenter tracking enabled. All right, so first thing you're gonna notice is that we're zooming in and getting us a better crop. Kind of like what we just saw with the auto framing on Patrick. It's zoomed in on me. It's giving me, uh, based on our preferences, a tighter image, which is great. But this is not just uh, framing. This is full presenter tracking. If I move around the room, you can see that that camera's following me. Here's what's happening behind the scenes. This is the image from the SeerVision server. 
Everything that's in this shot is something it's trying to analyze. Now, you'll notice this is a wide shot, even though the presenter shot over there is still tight. That's why we have two cameras in the back. One camera is operating as a conductor mode to take a look at this. The other one is receiving the commands to zoom in and move around. All the green boxes in here are things that Sear Vision is fairly certain is a human. Uh, the orange box is something it's not quite sure is a human. I'm so sorry, we're not sure you're human. You didn't quite make it. What a weird way to learn that you might be a robot. I'm just doing it. <laughs> uh, it looks like I am 92% likely to be a human. That's better than my ex-wife would have given me, so I'll take it. Uh, up here, I am in this green presenter area that you can see on that page right up there. So I know that I'm the presenter because I'm in the area we've designated as the presenter zone. Whenever I move around, it's gonna keep following me. Doesn't matter if someone else stands up, it's still gonna follow me. With this information, we can do more things. You can see that purple area up there as well. That can be a trigger zone. If I move to the purple area, like this whiteboard over here, we can make various things happen. We know that while I'm here, I'm gonna be working on a whiteboard. That means the whiteboard is the important thing. So take a look at what we're sending to the far end. We've swapped the camera that's in the back of the room because that camera is permanently dedicated to this focus space in the environment. Because if you've watched me already, you know that I do this a lot. I sway while I talk, while I stand. I don't want the camera to kind of follow me as I'm doing this. I want the camera to focus on the whiteboard so the far end can actually read what I'm doing, right? When I leave this area, the light will dim so it's no longer a focus area. We go back to the presenter cam and it's on me again. And a reminder, this is not just facial tracking. This is full body tracking. You can see 18 points of, of telemetry data on my skeleton. If you can't see my face, that's fine. If I'm wearing a mask, if I move around, it's going to continue to track me the entire time. Now, if you're wondering, is this an either or scenario? Do I have to use Seer Vision or ACPR? The answer is, of course, you can use both. So when I start tracking, it cuts back to me. And when I'm done, right back to Nate. Uh, and I saw some of you notice this already. There's more things we can do in the room with this data. Um, because we have the locational information of where I'm at, you may have noticed that the green LEDs on the floor are following me, right? Uh, wherever I stand, I am being illuminated by this green uh, glow, which just makes me feel more important. I'm always highlighted in the room. It's everything I've ever wanted to just have a, a light shine on me no matter where I walk. It's great. Um, we can also set up areas of the room where you don't want the presenter to go. If I stand in front of something that I shouldn't be obscuring, we can trigger something Attention else. presenter. Yeah, that's me. You're blocking the display. Yeah, I know, but I did that on purpose. Please stop being terrible Ooh. and move to one side. I was, I was trying, I, I didn't mean Thank to. Thank you. Thanks for being very harsh about that. Uh, anyways, that is Seer Vision plus ACPR. We're giving that distance learner the best possible experience they can. Cool? All right. We got one more room, let's go.